For Eagles fans, this week has been a tough pill to swallow. Veteran guard, one of the best at his position, Brandon Brooks, suffered a torn Achilles earlier this week, an injury that will likely keep him out for the entirety of the 2020 season. Now, replacing any starter is a tricky task in the NFL, but replacing someone with the impact that Brandon Brooks has made, a player that has allowed one sack since he joined the team in 2016, is by no means an easy task. And there have been plenty of discussions about what the team should do next and where they should turn. Do they look to proven veterans? Do they bring in outside help? Or do they trust in the coaching ability of Jeff Stoutland to bring along one of the prospects in the pipeline? The leading candidate in that pool of players is TCU's Matt Pryor, a man who was selected in the sixth round by the Eagles in 2018 and saw 76 snaps last season. Now, most of those came in two separate games before he went on to make his first ever NFL start in the wildcard round against the Seattle Seahawks in wake of Brandon Brooks, who dislocated his shoulder. But the question now becomes, is Matt Pryor ready to step up and become the starting right guard for the Philadelphia Eagles, or do they need to source outside help? My name is Liam Jenkins, and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started, a massive thank you to every one of you who's taking time out of your day to watch this content. If you enjoy it, it would be great if you could hit that like button and of course subscribe to the channel if you want to join our community. We do have a Discord server where you can get to know plenty of other Eagles fans and make some new friends. And as always, if you're not already getting your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from phillysportsnetwork.com, now's the time to start doing so. We promise you we're changing the game. So who is Matt Pryor? Well, he's 25 years old, six foot seven, 332 pounds. The man is an absolute behemoth. And believe it or not, when he was actually drafted, I had the opportunity to speak to Matt about his time at TCU, where he was used all over the offensive line. And of course, played with former Eagle, Halapu Levati Vitae, someone that was a big role model for him and welcomed him to Philadelphia with open arms. The big thing that stood out for me in that phone call, even just days after being drafted, was the fact that he took the call after a workout in Texas. So he just finished working out and had picked up the phone. You could hear him still panting a little bit, like he genuinely just finished his workout. And I really admired that work ethic. And not once during that piece did Pryor ever sound content. Even days after a life-changing event, it was straight on to wanting to learn the playbook, to talking to the veterans, to admiring Coach Stoutland. He wanted to get in and work. And what we've seen in some limited sample sizes in the NFL is someone that has put in that work and has come a long way since then. The three games we're looking at today, two of them come against the Seattle Seahawks. The first one, of course, was in that heartbreaking regular season loss. The second in the wildcard round. And the third game was week 17 where he jumped in in wake of Brandon Brooks. So here's a quick look at what we can learn from such a limited sample size about such an intriguing player. The first thing that took me off guard here was how he handled a spin move from Shaquem Griffin. Now, because he's got such a monstrous frame, he can literally let that spin move roll off the front of his body Body like it's nothing. It's really, really impressive. Some interior guards don't have that kind of hand usage, but he delivers such a punch where it almost spins Griffin around as opposed to making it look like an intended maneuver. Matt Pryor is genuinely a transformer when it comes to upper body strength. He delivers such a punch. It's so violent. You get another example of it here. The problem is though that Pryor almost sort of goes like, hey, job done. He's unaware that McCown then scrambles to the other side and it ends up in a dead play because of the pressure that that now free player is able to bring. But that will come in time. If you look at raw traits and the fact that he can handle rip moves like this, where that frame is so damn suffocating to defensive tackles, where he doesn't get ripped away. It doesn't matter what that inside arm does. Because Pryor's 86 inch wingspan enables him to just stay in those plays. Even if he loses the battle or loses depth or can't quite run the ring, he can bully himself back into it. And having the trait is one thing, being able to use it is something else. Pryor is constantly able to reset his hands and get up and under into the chest of the defensive tackle and that was the perfect example of it and when you take that with someone that maintains a base as wide as this like look how are you meant to get past that in the run game Pryor does have some work to do he's not the most athletically gifted but in terms of just being a pass protector someone that can help on double teams with names like Lane Johnson he has got so much meat to him he has violent hands and the next few examples are just Matt Pryor bullying people sending players to the ground you see a fantastic 
classic example there. He does get some help from teammates on a few of these plays, but the guy is just an absolute monster. He resets those hands and he's able to out leverage the defensive tackles. He may have the girth, but they don't quite have the power that Matt Pryor does, where he can shoot his hands so aggressively. He is an aggressive offensive lineman. He's not someone that's going to wait for the defensive lineman to punch first. He wants to get his hands on you. He wants to drive you into the dirt. There may be no better example of that than on this play. We spoke about these diamond sets before when talking about Jalen Hurts. This is something kind of similar, not quite the same, but they are going to pull Matt Pryor to the outside here. You can see that Seattle are expecting a play to go to the left. Pryor is going to come across the line of scrimmage and take on that edge defensive end, giving Peters and Sayamalo a double team and a big gaping hole for Miles Sanders to run through. And he doesn't just take on the defensive end, he floors it. Rasheen Green, who weighs 279 pounds, dropped to the floor like a bag of sand all because of what Matt Pryor can do from a physical standpoint. Now again, he is not the most athletic guard you'll see. His game is predicated on power and bullying and strength as opposed to someone that is going to be leaner and lighter in the way of Brandon Brooks. But he delivers such a punch, such a vicious mentality in the passing game that when it works, it is absolutely blistering to watch. And you can begin to see why Jeff Stoutland was so high on him during that pre-draft process. You're going to see a nice example here of him shooting his hands and then it not quite working, having to reset, but then delivering this secondary punch which absolutely derails the player. It's the easier thing to spot on tape that Matt Pryor is an unbelievably strong young man. You can see him just manhandle defensive tackles like it's nothing. But like with every offensive lineman, you know I look for puppy paws and Matt Pryor has them, but as if they've got these stinger claws at the end of them. Like, just look at this. Jerron Reed is a 305 pound offensive tackle and Matt Pryor has one arm pushed into his chest, then delivers a second around the outside, and that's enough to buy Josh McCown some scrambling time. I love this play because the Eagles are obviously backed up at their own end zone. They cannot afford to suck up pressure, to give up pressure to Carson Wentz. And what we see from Matt Pryor is that he does get walked back. But look at the hands. like He creates this stone wall where the defensive tackle just can't get anywhere. He's constantly resetting, forcing a defensive tackle up in the air out of his stance at one point. It's really, really impressive. And what I notice is that those hands, that strength, that punch, all stop speed from faster, more athletic pass rushers because they can't get round that big frame. So Pryor's aware that if they can get round him, it may well be game over. But if he can maintain a wide base, if he can dig an arm into a chest or stab early on, then there's very little that defensive tackles can do, even at the NFL level. Now, that's okay, but again, he's not perfect. He was a sixth round pick for a reason, and he does have a tendency to struggle with his dropbacks initially. That's something that Jeff Stoutland will coach, but in situations like like this in comparison to the other one where that aggression gets the better of him and he offsets and he gets a little bit in trouble. He gives up pressure to Carson Wentz. I put it down to either a lack of focus or a lack of awareness. It does get the better of him sometimes like we see there. And it's a real shame. But again, this is where that project element comes in and why he was selected in the sixth round and not higher. Is If someone can breeze by him and Pryor can't set his hands, he doesn't necessarily have the footwork or the agility or the low center of gravity to get himself back into that play and it can be working against a very strong tide. And I think on that note, timing comes into play as well because, again, this is a very, very aggressive lineman. Someone that wants to just dig straight in, drive a player upfield and keep his quarterback safe. And that can hurt him because if he misses that angle or he mistimes that punch or he can't get his feet set, especially on blitz looks like we see here, it can end up being problematic. Pryor jumps out of his stance here and it's just not the optimal position. He ends up angling away from the pass rusher and opening up a massive lane for the blitzer to get home. Now, luckily, Carson Wentz is able to get this ball out of harm's way, but Pryor just tries to drive the linebacker in towards the other set of traffic, in towards the stunt to pick up the other player, but he does so too late because he was so aggressive and offset that first push where there wasn't much leverage to get back into it by the time it was done because he drove so hard, the stunt was already complete and the player was through. Now what the Eagles really need from their lineman is someone that can bring up 
those defensive tackles from the ground, get them out of the play and carve open lanes in the run. And a lot of that requires double teams. And you can see that chemistry between Vitae, between his former teammate in Matt Pryor that just played absolute dividends here where on combo blocks, on assignments where he had to maybe carve up field a little bit as well, that Matt Pryor was able to really grind that dirt because that's what he is. He's an absolute mauler. Now he's not going to be expected to reach up field to a linebacker with the same speed and agility of Brandon Brooks, but in terms of power, he can absolutely tick that box. Overall, I think Matt Pryor is easily a candidate to fill in for Brandon Brooks. And if I'm the Philadelphia Eagles, the way I'm playing this is I am going to look outside for extra help, but I'm not going to bring in someone like Larry Warford. I want to bring in a player that will give head-on competition to Matt Pryor. Someone like a Chance Warmack or a Stefan Wisniewski to Isaac Sayamalo that can ignite that competition where iron sharpens Zion and you let the best man win on a prove-it deal while maintaining some starter reps for Pryor, who won't get very many this offseason. But I think that with Jeff Stoutland in town. There is absolutely no reason to doubt his ability to coach and develop here. I mean, there is a reason that when Brandon Brooks went down and dislocated his shoulder, nobody kicked off. Nobody was scared. Nobody raised a slight concern over Matt Pryor because there was no reason to. Like, there was no reason to praise or criticize. He was as stable as you like. And that's really all the Eagles need. Someone that can tune in with their offensive tackle running mate, that can make life easier for Jason Kelsey, that can drag plays away from him, and that more importantly, can keep Carson Wentz upright. And I think with the frame, with the wingspan, with the fundamentals that Pryor has, he's not quite at a reliable starting level yet, but he's at a point where if he does get help from chipping tight ends and from the linemen around him, I think he has absolutely got the potential to at least tide the Eagles over to a point where Brandon Brooks returns. But what do you think, guys? Guys, let me know down in the comments section down below if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you next time.